Once upon a time, HubSpot conducted a design audit. The audit revealed that HubSpot had 16 different styles of models, 6 different primary buttons, and over 100 shades of the color gray in their app. Can you imagine how chaos confused HubSpot's users and slowed down the team's work? Hi, I'm Ilya, the founder of Elecan, product design agency for SaaS, and today I'll show you how a design system can help you to tackle design inconsistencies. Watch on for practical steps and ready-to-use Figma template. A design system is a collection of standards to manage scale in company's design. It may include a style guide. This is the visual identity of your product. It typically consists of specifications for typography, colors, icons, spacing, and other visual elements. UI pattern library. This includes reusable user interface components such as buttons, form fields, navigation menus, and models. Each of these components is typically defined by its appearance and interactive behavior. Component library. It's a repository of reusable components coded in language or framework used by the team, like React, Vue.js, Angular, etc. These components often reflect those defined in the UI pattern library. Voice and tone guidelines. These provide direction on how to communicate consistently throughout product, including error messages, helper text, tooltips, and any other type of copy. Layout templates. These are predefined structures that showcase how various UI components can be arranged on different pages or screens. Documentation. This is a crucial part of the design system that explains how to use all the components and templates, best practices, and any other instructions that help designers, developers, and any other team members use design system effectively. Design principles. There are high-level rules that guide decision-making when it comes to designing your product. Accessibility standards. Guidelines that ensure your product is usable by people with various disabilities. The advantages of having design system are velocity and quality. First, building a design system, you get a unique opportunity to solve each design challenge once instead of every time it comes up, and make the solution available to anyone in the team. Without needing to reinvent the wheel, your product team will be able to accelerate their product design process, like skipping wireframing step and jumping to high-fidelity design. Second, a pattern library enables better user experience, especially for large companies. Usability and learnability improve when similar interface components look and function in similar way. When is the right time to start building a design system? In theory, the sooner the better. It's in theory because no one ever started a design system until they trip over their 100 shades of grey. As the startup scales, so do design teams, as well as the amount of code and the number of features. Designers start to solve already solved problems, create redundant entities, and most importantly, decrease user experience for people who have to go through those dozens of different fonts and buttons. Chaos emerges and builds up, starting to create roadblocks for the design process and effectively performance of digital products. Finally, comes a moment when the pain from chaotic design is stronger than the wish to preserve the status quo. Companies realize it's time to bring order to the chaos before their business gets ruined under the chaos weight. When I say ruin, I'm not being metaphoric. Science said that 14% of startups fail due to bad organization, and 9% more fail due to the problems with scaling. A design system becomes steel grid that supports the peeling product from collapse. Now, how to create a design system? Start by running a design audit, like HubSpot. Explore and codify what you already have designed. If you found 10 different buttons being used alongside, choose one and document it as a standard design component. I have a video on how to arrange an audit, check it out, it's pretty popular. To design system architecture for UX, we recommended using Brett Frost's atomic design methodology. It offers to approach the design system elements in five stages, moving from the simplest reusable UI components to complex patterns. Atoms are the smallest building blocks like labels, inputs, or buttons. Molecules are groups of UI elements that work together as a unit. For instance, an input plus a button make up a search form for molecule. Organisms. Those are more complex design structures that consist of atoms and molecules, like a website header that includes our search form plus brain identifier and navigation links. Templates. Here we come to a page level object that incorporate all the previous levels into skeletal layout, for example, a wireframe or a homepage. Pages. Pages add some meat to the bones 
and interface templates. In the case of a home page, it can be text and images added to the template to look at the real content in action. Pages can be used to test them or to align ideas with stakeholders, for instance. The first two levels are enough to start with. They create a solid foundation for further design system development. We at Telecan call such atoms and molecules combo a UI kit and create it for all of our clients. Let's take a look at one of UI kit we created for Invali. It consists of colors, fonts, spacing, icons, buttons, filters, controls, etc. In some cases, a situation requires a more complex solution, like in the case of DataWisp. For that app, we created a new way to work with data visually. Therefore, the design system included components of that complex solution, like cards, data blocks, pivot tables, charts, and more. Sounds complicated, doesn't it? No worries, I prepared for you a free beginner's design system template. It's easy to use and will help you to clean up your design. We've tested this approach with many of our clients, so I'm pretty sure it can help you too. You'll find the link to the Figma file in the description. Copy the file and follow the step-by-step -step guide. It will show you how to sort out your colors, typography and buttons. You'll do this on a blank page, but there is a filled-in example on the right to help you. Using this template will get you started with your design system and show you how to develop it further. The last thing I want to cover here is how to run a design system. You may be surprised how many design systems were created just to sit abandoned on their dusty digital shelf. It may happen due to three reasons. A design system fails to gain widespread adoption. System works only if everyone in the product team knows how to use them. But then a lot of busy people have to spend a lot of time reading a lot of boring docs. We end up with a product team that ignores their components or isn't aware of those at all. Employees don't take a design system seriously, especially if they feel like it gets in the way instead of making things easier. People avoid friction in their processes and attempts to introduce a new way of doing things instead of the old ones is very definition of friction. Static documentation of a dynamic process is doomed to fail. Organizations often lack a commitment to update and maintain their systems, so they quickly become outdated. The solution is to run a design system at the product, not the project. That means when you are yelling, we did it, we launched a style guide, mission accomplished. Your mission is in the very beginning, actually. Business doesn't feel any value from your design design system yet. The value will emerge after product team will start shipping features using design components from the system, which means you've got some more work to do. Your newborn design guide needs a team to manage and update it. It needs a roadmap and backlog. It needs promotion and training for existing stuff and onboarding plans for new stuff. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that was useful. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe and see you in the next videos.